Praise him. Amen. You gonna sing a song, girl? We went down to sing a plan then. I got to read back him. You look so tired. You know, we started singing. You're going everywhere. She said that wouldn't ring. She said, this would ring on me. I'm not going to worry, no. Oh, 
miles to go far. I've been made a check. When the homework's done, I love the Lord. Ain't that in my heart? From day to day, He's leading me on to that right land, the beautiful dawn from His dear side. I remember the fall, and two, I learned the waters shall see when I have crossed life's mystical sea. I love the Lord. Yes, I love the Lord, deep down in my heart, no earthly change can cause me to part. I've been made a channel with the whole world's heart. I love the Lord, deep down in my heart. Such boundless, precious, glorious love, the Savior sent from heaven above. It fills my soul with wonderful joy and drives away the things that annoy. I love the Lord, deep down in my heart. Yes, I love the Lord, deep down in my heart. No earthly change can cause me to part. I've been made a child. So good. Thank you, Lord. Girls, y'all got one? Amen. One Promises of Christ my King Through eternal ages Let His praise be free Glory in the highest I will shout and sing Standing on the promises of God
Praise the Lord. Amen. We're standing on his promises. Amen. Tell you what, you can't, you can't get no more sure amen, than what he's promised. Amen. Because I guarantee you, every one will come to pass. Amen. We need all fellowship. Tell somebody you love them. Amen. Amen. How many loves your brother? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. One sixteen. What about that? My treasures in that home above, trusting fully, trusting in the Savior's love, doing what I can for heaven's holy love. I'm getting ready to leave this world. I'm getting ready to leave this world. I'm getting ready for the gates of pearl. Keeping my records high, watching my daylight. I'm getting ready to leave this world, trusting in the riches of His saving grace. Any earthly trial I His love can trace, sure that up in heaven I shall find a place.
and my sails are torn. Your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm. And the solid rain is falling down from underneath my feet. And the black sky and my red eyes, I can barely see. Stay home. But if you have the opportunity to come to God's house, you need to come. 
Amen. Because every time you have an excuse for not coming, the devil makes it easier and easier and easier the next time. So I pray that God puts conviction back on their hearts and brings them back through the door. Amen. 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 That's good.
Jesus.
Jesus.
just inside, Lord. No more heartaches and no more tears. I didn't hear no praying anywhere. When the clouds open up and there stands Jesus. a song or a testimony before there's a preacher, one of these preachers preach, a couple of them preach, who's going to preach? <laughs> Amen. Kathy, you want to say something tonight? <laughs> I know it's a little bit slow, but... Amen tonight, but... Amen. David's wanting to preach. David's wanting to preach. David, David, he can... <laughs> I'm, I'm just letting that bonus with you, huh? Yeah, I've, uh, come on, Kathy. I had, I had one vision while I was wide awake, and not a dream, and it was a vision. So I, Lorraine was driving, I was sitting in the passenger seat, and there was a little baby, uh, Isaiah, which he's grown up now, I mean, he's getting big boy, but he was this little baby when I had that, and I, and I remember he couldn't even talk yet. And I remember the vision. I was, had Isaiah in my arm. And he was whispering in my ear. And I was preaching it to the congregation what he was saying. Amen. I never never had anything like that happen to me before in my life. Amen. But whatever he was saying, I was preaching. Come on, Kathy. Now the mouth of babies, right? Use it, you're gonna lose it. I said, Give me scripture for that. He said, The talents. I said, Okay. Amen. It's so true. I started I started reading about talents, but uh, for some reason, past couple months, uh, the Lord's been dealing with me over some stuff. Not just me, but He lets me know sometimes what people are going through. Right. And if you listen, He'll tell you. Yes. And if you're a minister, you listen to God, whatever God's talking to you about, He wants you to tell. Right. And the Lord's been letting me know that there's some people in this body, my family here in the church, that are having some issues with where they uh, where they fit their calling, right. what God's called them to do. Right. And uh, the brother preached something uh, last time he preached, and I actually had a message kind of the same. And I told him, I said, it's good to know when you're in season right. and somebody else gets the same kind of thing That's that right. you've got. And uh, so I started reading about this, and God started talking to me about it just a little bit. You know, um, when we have, when God gives us something, no matter what it is, we have to use it. Now, I'll be honest with you. I've been a pastor, and I don't like it. Come on. You need to pray for that man because it takes something to be able to lead a flock. And we need to pray for our pastor. Amen. And it takes an anointing to do that. You can't just step up and say, okay, I'm going to be a leader. We've got too many leaders. Come on, man. And we need to be following Jesus. We Come don't on, need to be man. following man. Amen. So, you know, today, in this day and time, because I, I really think that we don't have a whole lot of time till the Lord's going to come back and get us. Amen. And we need to know where our place is in the body. Come on. And we need to know what God's wanting us to do when you start doing it. Right. Amen. Okay. I think He wants to preach. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. And 
this will take a little bit. The hay is a little bit slow now. I don't see nobody up running around, nobody shouting, nobody speaking in tongues. And since nobody else wanted to get up and preach, so y'all can sit there and listen to me, all right? <laughs> Next time, you'll say, oh, all right, if y'all want to, if y'all want to follow along with me, I'm going to be in the Matthew 25th verse, I mean, 25th chapter, and I'm going to start on verse 14. We don't have to stand because there's there's like 30 verses. Well, actually, there's 16 I'm going to read, unless you really want to. If you want to, you can, okay? All right. It's going to be a little bit slow, but sometimes you've got to learn a little bit. That's right. Okay. Uh, chapter 25, verse 14, it says, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered to them his goods. Now, this is talking about Jesus. Said he is the man who traveled into a far country, and he has given his servants right. his goods. Right. He's gave, now. Did y'all catch that? Yes. He gave us his goods. Amen. Now, what is what can what was Jesus's goods? Come on, I want y'all to get interactive here tonight. Come on. The word. You got you got the Holy Ghost. You got the word. What else? What can you do? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Healing. Come on. Prophecy. Uh, Come on. I like where you're going. Come on. He got some gifts. He said he gave them. He gave us his goods, didn't he? Discern, discernment. That's a good one. Discernment. Okay. And it says, and and to one he gave five talents, and to another two, and to another one. To every man according to his ability. And straightway he took his, he went off and took his journey. Now. It, he gave every man, every one, not just man, every one of his servants, he didn't say man or woman, I want to specify right there. It says servants, he gave according to his ability. Now, you think, well, he's given to you according to how smart you are. No, it's not always that. Have you ever met somebody who's really, really smart, but they're really, really lazy? Most smart people, really smart people are lazy. Amen. And most dumb people, well, no, I'll be honest with you. And most people who can, who are not that smart can work circles around the smart people. Right. Amen? Amen? So God's going to give you what, according to your ability. Okay? What you are able to do. Now, he don't want you, if you're dumb, he don't want you going to try and do what the smart man's going to do. And I don't mean to tell nobody dumb. I'm just getting out on a level here, okay, so y'all can understand because God talked to me like this because I'm one of those dumb ones. I'm not a smart one. Come on. And I have, usually have to work real hard to get from point A to point B, okay? And he's not, he don't want the, the ones that he's gave a certain talent to, the ones that he's really put in the Word, the ones that he has really put in there and, uh, you know, from Scripture to Scripture to Scripture to Scripture, back and forth and understand it and get it right like that. I don't really necessarily want them to go off and do what the other person is going to do. That's right. Okay? See, we all have a part in the body. Now, this could be a really long message, but I'm going to cut it down because it's talking about the body. It really is. See, we all have a certain part in the body. Yes, we do. And when one person, when one piece of the body is missing, then the body is complete. Have you ever tried to... Uh, have, I know you ladies sometimes, y'all go to the grocery store. It, most of the time, if you're like me, I've got a book, and it's as big as a suitcase. So when I get out in my car to take my groceries in, I've got my suitcase on my arm, and I've got keys right here, and then I've got grocery bags up on all my wrists, and here I'm going through the yard trying to, to get through there. But because I'm trying to do more than what I need to be doing. I'm trying to be smart, work harder, not smart, smarter, not harder. Well, I end up working harder, not smarter. We need, to, we need to listen to what God's telling us today. Amen. And then, okay, now where am I at? I lost my place here. Okay, it says, And then he that received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. In other words, he took his five talents and he multiplied them. So he ended up with ten, didn't he? Okay, it says, And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained another two. It didn't say how he did it. It just said he gained another two. It says, but he that received one went and dug in the earth and hid his Lord's money. Yeah. Why would he do that? <laughs> okay. He wanted to keep it. He wanted to keep it. Safekeeping. Well, he wanted to keep it for safekeeping because he was afraid maybe that he would lose it. 
Maybe he was afraid to invest. Maybe he was afraid that things wouldn't go his way. Maybe he was afraid that he wouldn't have the same outcome as the other two did. You know what I'm You keep saying he's afraid of this, he's afraid of that, he's afraid of this. Is fear of God? No. Okay. Fear is not of God. Fear is of the devil. Amen. Amen. I'm sitting there. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, fear is of the devil. Now, how many in here has ever experienced fear? Everybody has. Everybody. How many of us in here, this is a little tougher question, how many of us in here are actually living in fear right now? What are you afraid of? Failing. Failing God. Failing God. Okay. Well, you, you're the one with the one talent. You need to go and dig your talent back up. Down the ground. And you start multiplying. And like, let me see, where am I at? But he that received, okay, I Okay. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with, him, with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought another five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. And his Lord said to him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. And if you keep on reading, the one who had the two talents, the Lord said the same thing to him. Enter thou in, because y'all have you have been faithful over a few things, I'll make you ruler over many things. Now, sometimes we go through things in our life and we think, well, God, how can why do I feel like I'm helpless in this situation? Why do I feel like I have absolutely no control in my life? Now I know God is supposed to have control in our life, but there are certain things that God gave us power over. Amen. 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 But do y'all ever feel like the devil just beating the tar out of you? Beating you to death. Feel like you can't win for losing. As soon as you get up, he knocks you right back down. Well, because we're not faithful. We have to start being faithful over a few things. Yes. Now, some of us, we need to be faithful to come to church. Yes. Amen? And some of us are here every service, but we're not faithful to read the Word. And some of us who are faithful to read the Word, maybe we're not faithful to pray every day. Maybe the ones who are here every service, maybe the ones who pray every day, maybe we don't obey the Lord the way we're supposed to. See, he said to be faithful over a few things, and I'll make you ruler over many things. If we want to be ruler over the enemy that's trying to be in our life, we have to be faithful over what God has given us. We have to tend to the things that God's gave us. We have to take care of it. Amen. Don't you know, Right. Okay. I'm looking and it says, Then he which had received one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not straw. And immediately, the first thing he does is pass the buck. That's right. The first thing he does. Yeah, Mike. First thing he does is pass the buck. So he says, I, Lord, I know that you're a hard man. So he's automatically going to going to say, well, I was afraid that this is what you would do. Right. Now, you know, if we, when God gives us something, do you think he wants us to use it? Oh, yes. yeah. I think he does. Okay, praise me at this point. Um, when we have gifts, and we have things that, that the Lord promised us in the Word, right? Yeah. Um, like, we can praise God anytime we want to, right? Yes. We have to wait till we feel it. No, no. We better be doing it when we don't feel it. Amen. Amen. He's given, he gives, gave us the Holy Ghost, the, the Spirit of God, to lead us and guide us. Do we only need to listen to God when we feel it? No. no. We need to do it all the time, don't we? You see, this and the gifts that God puts in our life, the physical things that He wants us to do to carry out what He wants in our life, we have to do them even when we don't feel it. Amen. And I'll be honest with you, sometimes I'm like, Lord, I ain't feeling this. He's like, well, I don't care if you're feeling it. He said, I told you to be instant. Amen. 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 Now I'm gonna tell y'all something. When when God called me, um, I went to my pastor at the time and I said, "Look, I said, well, first, first I called his wife. I, was, I got scared, <laughs> but I didn't tell her. I didn't tell her what the Lord spoke to me. I just told her. I said, look, I said God spoke something to me, and I said, and I want you to go pray about it. I said, then I want, if God tells you something, won't you call me back? And uh, she said, okay. So, about an hour or so later, she calls me back. I'm like, well, what did God tell you? Tell you? I was here, like, here I am, you know, I'm throwing out a fleece. I'm like, okay, I want to see if this is God or if this ain't God. And she called me back and she told me, she said, this is what I feel like God told you. 
And she hit the nail on the head. God's called me to the ministry. I said, okay. The following Sunday, or Monday, I don't remember what day it was. I know I was leaving church when God spoke to me. So the next service, and I believe it was Sunday school service, pastor had me on the floor that fast. And every week after that, we was going to Sunday school, he had me on the floor. If I was on the floor five minutes, whatever, two minutes, it, he made sure. He's like, Sister Kathy, I'm like, okay. But I'm going to tell y'all something. What that did for me, that taught me yes. to, when when my leaders say, Kathy, I'm like, okay. And you don't always have something written down. You don't always right. have a plan. That's right. But you have to show the devil who is in control of your life. That's right. You have to show the enemy. Okay, I might not have a big, long, high message. I may not have something that's going to make the entire church erupt. But today, I'm going to stand up, and I'm going to stand in the calling that God's given me, whether you like it or not. Amen? So we have to use it, or we'll lose it. Okay? Okay. Moving on. I don't even know what verse I'm on. Okay, thank you, Katrina. It says, And the Lord answered unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knowest that I reap where I sow not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. In other words, if you're not going to, in, in yeah, with interest. In other words, if you're not going to do nothing, at least put your gift somewhere, do something with it, so it'll gain a little bit. Right. At least tend to it a little bit. Right. It'll gain interest. Amen. Yes, it'll gain interest. Just take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which hath ten talents. Why do you think that he gave it to the one who had the ten talents, not the one that had the four? Because he was the two, one of the ten was more obedient. He was more obedient, more and he had he had pressed a little bit harder and a little bit farther, didn't he? Yes, yeah, so he can handle a little bit more. See, that's the few things. And he said, if you're faithful, he said, I'll make you ruler over many. So there was many, and sometimes that many might be belong to somebody else. It just depends on how willing and how obedient you are. The word says if you're willing and obedient, what will you do? You eat the good of the land. Amen? It says, for unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not... Shall be taken away, even that which he has. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Uh -oh. Now I'm going to tell y'all something. I believe this, and y'all can disagree with me if you want to. That's all right. But I believe that disobedience is a sin. Amen. I believe. I believe that if you disobey God, if you disobey God's word, if He tells you not to kill and you kill, I believe that's a sin. I believe that's. A, it's a sin. Yeah. If you right. if God tells you to jump and you don't jump, I believe you've committed sin. And I don't believe that there's a white sin and a black sin. I believe that a white lie will take you to hell just as fast as committing murder will. Yeah. Now, you may reap a little bit worse for committing the murder than you do from telling a white lie, but when you stand before God, it's all sin. Amen. When right. John the Baptist was baptizing, he was taught, he saw Jesus coming, and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God which came to take away the sin of the world. So he puts all sin in one category. And I believe that if we disobey God, that it's a sin. And I believe that if we have something in our life that God's told us to do and we're not doing it, I believe it's a sin. Amen? Uh, well, it says uh, that uh, disobedience is as the sin of witchcraft. And what to me, now I've tried to study that out, and the only thing I can ever come up with is uh, it's the opposite. Witchcraft would be the opposite of what a uh, servant God is. Right. So if you're, and he said, if you're not for us, you're against us. If you're not for me, you're against me, you know. So if you're disobeying God, then you're being rebellious. Rebellion, that's what it is. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. That's right. So if you're not obeying God, you're being rebellious toward him. And you may, I mean, it's basically in the same category. Yes, it is. And it is a sin. So, uh, I told y'all, y'all probably should have, you know, get out on my preach. But it's been a little slow, but I want y'all to learn something because when God speaks to me, I know to say something. And some, I'll be honest with you, it's really hard sometimes because I'm thinking, Lord, I don't want to hear that. 
But uh, sometimes you have to do it anyway. Well, all the time. You have to say what God needs you to say. No matter if you feel it or you don't. Because I don't know about you all, but my little talent that God's gave me, I don't want to bury it in the ground. I want to multiply it. I want to do something with it. So that way, maybe somewhere down the road, it'll start bringing forth fruit. And every time we do what God tells us to do, you know, we're sowing seed. And when that seed dies in the ground, it starts coming up, there's going to be fruit from that because we're just, we're obeying the Lord. Amen. 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 It's good. Reasonable. Amen. Anybody find it? What's it say? What is it? And they were judged every man according to their works. Am I right or wrong? Is that what the Bible says? Yeah. Okay. The thing it was is, you know, we always say, you know, we're not saved by works. We're saved by grace, and that's true. Amen. That is true. It's God's amazing grace. But we got, as she was just talking about the talents. Why did he have it in there unless we got something to do? Amen. We've all got something to do. You say, well, I don't sing or I don't play an instrument or I don't preach. There's a lot of other things to do. Praying for people. Taking, yeah, even the one, amen, that goes around and makes sure these cans are empty. It's, it's a work to do. And you know, somebody is going to clean the toilet every now and then. There's a work to do. See, I, I don't mean anything by this. But I'm going to tell y'all something. I used to say something all the time, and I know y'all heard this. You ever heard somebody say, uh, boy, you had to back up and get your payday this week because you didn't do a whole lot. Anybody ever hear that? I used to, I've heard it said a whole lot of times. I, I know it, you might not have, but I have. People will say, well, you, you had, boy, you had to back up and get that payday. Or did you have to back up and get that payday? And I don't want to have to back up and get my payday when I get over there. Amen. You see what I'm saying? One thing I don't think you're going to be able to because you're judged by your works and I probably won't be there. You know what I'm saying? To get your reward. Because that servant that you were told about, Sister Kathy, when he said, take this to somebody, give, here's Kathy's water. Uh, when, when he said, what did he say to the one? He said, thou slothful servant, didn't he? What did he say? He said, get him, cast him into outer darkness where there are weeping and gnashing of teeth. Come on, somebody, that ain't heaven. You see what I'm saying? There's a work for all to do. I sing a song all the time, the little is a lot when God is in it. <laughs> Labor not for wealth or fame. One verse says, the fields are ripe for harvest. Amen. And there's a work for all to do. 
Hark the master, his voice is calling. To the harvest, he is now calling you. Amen? Listen, there's a work for everybody to do. I was sitting there at the shop one day, and Mike and Ashley come through the back door, and they was having some dinners in their hand. That's a work. There's a work for everybody to do. When, when we done our Christmas thing, I seen pictures of a lot of people up here that was putting baskets or things, you know, little gift things together. That's a work. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Anything we doing to promote the kingdom of God is something is a work for God has caught you doing. Amen? Amen. Now listen, you may be afraid. I'll tell you something. When I was a kid, I wasn't afraid of nothing. When it came to me serving God, I was 15 years old. When I got saved, let me tell you something. I got something. I walked away from God. Don't tell me you can't because I did. But I remember staying at that altar until I couldn't. Man, I was, I was until the Lord, I'm telling you, he absolutely just poured it out on me. But I remember standing and God was showing me something. I grabbed this. Man, I was 15 years old. I grabbed this guy and said, come here. God's going to hit you. That's, that was this way I would be Amen. at 15. Come here. God's going to heal you. You know? You, listen. That's the way we need that again. We need Amen. that to where we don't fear. And, and if I look back and I see that something is, you know, and God is showing me something, that, that we just get right on it. You say, well, I'm afraid that I'll be wrong and then I'll be a false prophet. I didn't want my Bible said. The spirit is subject to the prophet. So, I, I, listen, all through the Bible, Jesus made all the Old Testament prophets come true by what he did. He will. And uh, the thing of it is, is, she was talking about the talents, and I said, I don't want to back up and get my payday. I had this wrote down here. I don't want to back up and get my pay. We are judged by words. Amen. Huh? I, and listen, listen, we need to walk a little bit more by faith and not by sign. Amen. Because these eyes, you say, well, I don't see this happening, but yet, let me tell you something. Let's believe things is going to happen. I've heard, I don't know how many preachers here lately talk about God filling this house. Let's don't go nowhere. Let's get planted, rooted in real good. Let's stay unmovable like that tree that's planted by the water. And say, God, we're going to be here. We're going to do our part. And we're going to use our talents. We're going to see things happen. And then we're going to see the people come in. We're going to see people get saved. And we're going to see some things happen. Amen. 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 We just don't, you know, I, I think we just need to hang in there just a little bit longer. Amen. Listen to all the people, great people in the Bible. And I'm not getting to where I, somebody told me the other day, they said that they was, they had been sick and they said people looked at, and this was a preacher, and he said people looked at him and said, well, where's your faith at? Don't you know that God is going to do this? He said, I do have faith. He said, I ain't got nothing to do with my faith because of what's happening in his body. And he said, even the great men in the Bible died. And you know what? He's true. Amen. Elisha died. Amen. Moses died. Come on, somebody. There was only two in the Bible that I knew of that didn't die on, you know, that was taken out of here. And that was Enoch and Elijah. And Enoch said that he was walking and, with, and God took him. He had a testimony, please God, one scripture said. And Elijah, y'all know that he was carried out of here in a chariot of fire. But that, you know what? That's the only two I know of. The Bible says it's once appointed unto man to die and then the judgment. Well, preacher, you're talking death. No, I'm talking life. I've seen God heal. I know he can heal. But there is a time to, that's going to come if we if we live here long enough that we're going to leave this world. Amen. 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 The thing of it is, is what have you done with your talents while you've been here alive? Amen. You see what I'm saying? Amen. She was talking about it. Amen. 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 We're getting prayer requests. That's what I was looking at. Amen. We've got a lot to pray about. Amen. But God can do anything. I know God can heal. I've seen God move. But I'm going to be honest with you. There's a time that when we're going to leave here. You think I'm, 
everybody in here, I had a mom and a dad that went on to be with the Lord. Amen. And my mom supported this church. Y'all know how she was. Y'all remember. Amen. You think I wouldn't have prayed for her to stay here? Amen. Amen. We did pray for her. But there's a sickness that one day that you're going to leave. Amen. Thing of it is, is are you ready to go? Amen. Amen. Because there's a place waiting over there where we're all trying to get to. Amen. Amen. And, we're, and that is heaven. Amen. Amen. You know, I was thinking about baptism. And I was thinking about you need to get baptized. Jesus says those that believe and are baptized shall be saved. I believe you need to be baptized. And I'm going to tell you something else. Everybody, and I know you say you have to be baptized to go to heaven. No. I know what the thief, thief on the cross said to Jesus. But he didn't say today y'all will be with me in heaven. He said today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Amen. That's a holy place. <laughs> Amen. But anyway, I, I would rather do what Jesus said to do while we're in our, you know what, while we're in our right mind. And why everything? And that is, amen. Those who believe and are baptized shall be saved. We need, amen. We need to get, get baptized. If you ain't got baptized, we need to get baptized. Amen. 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 Come on. Amen. amen. It's true, ain't it? Amen. But anyway, if you listen to the Lord, He'll speak to you on these things. Amen. Listen, I've been baptized a bunch of times. Why? Because when the water was trouble, I wanted to jump in and get another dose. Amen. I said, look, y'all baptize me again, we? Amen? Ain't God good? He's never let me down. He won't let you down either. Amen? I thought you got a good job. Amen? Amen. Getting something said clear. Amen? We need it sometimes. Amen? I love good teaching. Amen? You sure can. tell you why. Amen. No matter what your belief is, you should respect the word of God. Amen. 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 I don't care if it's a donkey or a chicken, God can use anybody. Amen. Amen. Can he? Amen. And, and you know what? That's what that's what we got to watch out for. I, you know what? What I like to think about is where is your heart? Amen. Amen. And I always say, where's the love at in it? Because I sit there and hug your neck and go, oh, Sister Kathy, I love you today. Amen. <laughs> That's right. So you can't you can't get past it. You better really, really, really love your brother. And this is how you know you pass from death into life because you love your brother. You know what? When I when I got up from my altar of prayer, uh, well, when I was a kid, I loved everybody. But even when I come back and renewed my life to the Lord, I tell you what. When I got up, I loved everybody. Man, I love everybody. Amen. That's right. And he, you know what? I didn't. Know, people say, "Well, you gotta love me." You know what? I didn't have to. I wanted to Amen. love everybody. Amen. I'll tell you something. That's right. You really don't do your thing. Amen. Till you get the love of God in your heart. Then you realize, I'll be honest with you, I was a cruel person there at one time. Amen? Cruel person. And uh, I actually said, there ain't no hope for me. Amen? But God 
I never went too far that God couldn't get a hold of. Amen. I thought that I had. Now I can't. I can't be mean to nothing. You know, we got two little dogs at the house, and the one's got messed up teeth, and she don't eat dog food real well. And Lorraine jumps on me all the time because I'm at the dinner table going. Feeding poor little patches. <laughs> I'm laying on the couch and she wants to come up and she'll get up because she can't jump up there too good. I'll reach down and get her and put her up there with me. And she'll lay down with me. God will change your heart. I'm telling you. He will, won't he? Amen. You won't walk the way you used to walk. Amen. See if I can see these very well. Let me see. We got Will to pack. Lisa Bryant needs prayer. Bubby's sick. Carol Copley's sister is real sick. We need to pray for all these requests. Amen. It's come up. Amen. 